going on guys? Today we're talking about end gap in the rings on the Magnum 10. I have an assortment of rings here um, because I was trying to figure out what would be the best avenue to get the rings, the ring end gap as tight as possible. Um, the book, uh, the Kohler manual that I have says the factory end gap is 10 to 20. So what I did was I took the, took the um, ring sets and threw them in the bore and did some end gapping with my uh, feeler gauge. The, um, the Chena set 20 over uh, actually was pretty tight um, with the factory settings being 10 to 20. The top ring was 11, the middle ring was 14, and the bottom ring was 13. Uh, so right in there, right in spec, um, but it didn't have as in my prior videos, I just didn't feel confident with this ring set. It just seemed weird to me that it would have two top rings and not a top ring and a middle ring. The, uh, the next thing I have is a set of 20 over rings, uh, Kohler factories. They actually uh, measured out huge, um, 20, 15, and 20. So the top ring was 20, the middle was 15, and the bottom ring was 20. So it just just didn't that didn't work out for me so what did we do we got a 30 uh, or a 30 over ring set and I end gap these to the bore to factory so basically the top ring is worked out to be 13 the middle ring is 14 and the bottom ring is 13 so not right on 10 but not above 15 so we'll have good wear it shouldn't bind up or anything to that effect. In other words, once the motor gets hot, we should have plenty of good clearance. So that's how it all worked out. So right now we're gonna run with a 30 over set, end gapped to 13 to the top, 14 to the middle, and the bottom will be 13. So that should be fine, close enough for what I'm gonna do. And how do I do it? It's pretty simple. I will actually just use this ring set for example purposes. Um, initially, obviously with a 30 over ring set, it shouldn't fit in a 20 over bore. That's correct. I couldn't get the 30, uh, 30 over ring set into the bore, so that means I had to end gap it. Basically, I take the, uh, take the ring like this and just touch it together, and I use my Dremel. And on my Dremel, uh, there is a small like fiber, um, stone wheel, and I just take this and basically lightly touch it like that on the uh, on the wheel just to grind the ends down I'll do that you know you know slow very lightly touch being very cautious to keep the ring nice and straight or you know perpendicular to the stone so that way we can have a nice straight edge and then I have a little old, an old points file I just file the ends just very lightly uh, just to make them smooth, make sure there's no bur bo uh, burrs, sorry, not bores, burrs, uh, because we don't want to scratch the bore. And then I chuck it into the bore gently, and then I just use my feeler gauge, um, you know, like this in, between, in the opening in the bore. Um, I'll roll in some film of me actually doing it, and I just kind of go back and forth, back and forth, uh, between all the rings. I just happened to start with the top ring and then work to the bottom. You can work from the bottom you can go up to the top. It, it really doesn't make any difference. Uh, one thing I do do is make sure that you use the piston when you do your measuring. Use your piston to push it into the bore so that way you know it's nice and level and you're going to get an accurate reading. Um, you'll see me do that uh, coming up very shortly. So there it is guys, that's how I, that's how I end gap rings. Um, it's kind of backwards, but you know, it works, you know, with a fairly tight ring set, uh, some good, with the seats on the valves reground and with new valves in it, um, this thing should have factory to killer compression. And with that, let's watch me ruin a set of rings, right? I'm just kidding. We're going to end gap the rings right now. <laughs> 